to this day, to this day, rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's stupid. Use your common sense. Hello, I am Bushido Spirit, back with another discussion. I have my boy here, Mo. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and obviously, we gathered today to talk about Euphoria Episode 3, Made You Look. Now, I just realized that each episode is named after rap songs. The second episode was Stunned Like My Daddy on some Little Wayne shit. And the you know, first episode was just pilot. They didn't they, they didn't decide on <laughs> doing that yet, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, and uh, episode four is called Shook Ones Part 2. One of the greatest beats of all time. But uh, yeah, we're talking. Sorry, go ahead, Mo. I don't know. I don't know if this is the show that should be uh, using the hip-hop title, man. We can keep it going. <laughs> Uh, uh, look, man, we got a lot of hip hip hop in the background, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of see what you're saying with that, but uh, I'm gonna let that rock. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, we're gonna do our brief uh preview of episode three, and uh, before I even get into that, uh, since Mo wasn't here for those reviews, sort of a loner thing I'm doing, I'm gonna let Mo give us a uh, you know, just a brief review of the last two episodes like what do you think about the show so far mo uh i mean i think it's really good for the most part but i, I kind of want to preface that by saying this is not typically the type of show i would enjoy like i don't really care for high school dramas i don't really care for high school kids i don't care for teenagers God i don't care damn. for young people fuck them <laughs> i hate them man i hate you you're repulsive you're disgusting you don't take enough showers everybody wants to fucking <laughs> screw and say bad words man i hate you niggas okay <laughs> okay yeah Damn. But I'm invested in the drama the series is presented. It's shown me within two episodes. It's, it's anything but atypical. And for the most part, I'm invested in the characters, the journey they're about to go through. And I I want to watch more, you know? All right. With that yeah. being said, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this uh, preview of episode three. The summer before high school, Kat started writing fan fiction. She had become extremely popular online. I'm not saying I'm in love. I'm just saying I really like him. Who, Shy Guy 118? When the whole world goes dark, nothing else matters but the person standing in front of you. Look, all I know is that most guys are real sympathetic. King Queen? Hi. Ew. Okay. That's enough of that. We're gonna keep it right there. So, mm -hmm. so that was uh, that was pretty juicy, man. Um, and a lot of things you could kind of predict from uh, how the last episode ended. So, uh, we're gonna do the character breakdown that I typically do with these reviews. Um, so let's start off with Rue. What will be Rue's journey in the next episode? Last episode, she was passed out. She had took uh, I forgot what that shit is called. Uh, what's that drug? I forgot what it's called. Something. Amphetamine or something uh, some, like that. I, I met know. the truth of me. No, it wasn't that. Yeah. <laughs> fentanyl. That's what. That's what she took. Fentanyl. That's um, cool. It sounds cool as hell, but I don't think you want to take that, given how she reacted to it. Um. So, what do you think her journey is going to be in the next episode? What are your predictions for this character? Well, it doesn't seem like the episode is necessarily focusing on her, but I mean, ultimately, the show is 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 about. Out Rue, you know what I mean? It goes back to Rue whenever it can, even Rue with Jules. It seems like the, the, the preview is mainly focusing on other characters, but I think Rue is going to have to suffer the ramifications of what happened in the second episode where she got her dealer into a ton of trouble. But to be fair, you can't even really call her like him her dealer. She doesn't pay the man, you know what I mean? Yeah, she so, never uh, pays that. Yeah, like, and I feel sorry for the dealer, man. He's trying his hardest to be a good friend. And yeah, it, it it makes him question who he is. It makes him question, you know, I guess the morality of uh, selling drugs and its effects on other people. And yeah, <laughs> and and she is pushing it, man. Like she is mm -hmm. uh, that uh, drug dealers don't do this. Like he 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 was out of six hundred dollars last episode just to save her because she was about to get yeah. raped. That dude was not playing. 
And <laughs> they told her that. I, I think that's the part yeah. that really got me about the last episode. It's not like, oh no, we got into a terrible situation. She had the opportunity to leave. Like she, her, her needless, what's it called? Give me my drugs and I will leave mindset. Like, like this, it's this weird entitlement she has towards something she doesn't pay for and is ruining her life. Right? Yeah. This is what got her into this terrible mess to begin with. So I don't know, man. I, I feel like I feel like there's no doubt that the dealer cares about her, but at the same time, I don't think. She's she's gonna take his word very seriously about trying to fix her life. Honestly, I mean, we saw uh, we saw the conversation they had on the couch, and she sort of laid out everything. She put her cards on the table, and uh, as to why she started taking drugs, and it helps it it helps makes things easier life because she has anxiety, she's bipolar, she has a lot of different things um, that's fucking her up, and and <laughs> I don't I don't know if that's enough to. To, I don't know if that's reasonable enough for her to be taking all these drugs. It's probably not. Um, but I don't think she's, like you said, I don't think she's going to listen to anybody at this point. Um, and maybe she needs right. maybe she needs this type of thing to happen to her. Um, like, I mean, because she, she broke down in tears last episode. She was, like, crying when she had to stand up in front of the class and talk about her summer vacation. Um, mm-hmm. So... So yeah, I mean, maybe this event will change her, but like you said, it's not really focusing on on her in the next episode. Yeah, I I kind of I do see where it's trying to go with Rue's character. I feel like something we haven't really even considered this is that Rue might actually build up an even bigger addiction to this thing that this guy introduced her to. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. So so that's a whole whole play like place it can go, which is even more dangerous and tragic as if her story hasn't already been dangerous and tragic up until this point. You know, one one thing unique about her story is that she's not really sexualized. I don't think it's just because uh, it's not in her contract. Uh. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of do believe it's like they just can't afford that. Like, I don't know, like, man. Like, I think I, I think it's crazy I, effects and stuff. Yeah. Like, honestly, I don't think they can afford it. Like, wasn't that part in either this episode or the last or the last episode before that, where like uh, she'd been miss she'd been missing all of her uh, A meetings. Is, is that what they're called? A uh, NA. I can't even. NA, that's it. She was she was missing her NA meetings, and she wanted to get them all cleared so she could leave. And she said something about sucking the dude's dick, and it's like I was like Zendaya, this is <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. And of course that was a bluff, and nothing was gonna happen. You know what I mean? Yo, they but even uh, offering that. Yeah, but they they completely avoid those stereotypes, man. She she isn't a yeah. she like she sort of maintains her innocence throughout this whole yeah, entire course. thing so that's what makes I mean, that yeah, scene yeah. so uh heart pumping that scene where she's about to be uh uh like raped by this drug dealer is because she's she's still innocent we haven't seen her involved with anybody you know just drugs yeah uh, and yeah and we'll, like, i'm sorry go ahead also for the most part i think something that does definitely help her, her case as a character is is never does she feel good about the people that she's hurting by hurting herself you know oh yeah most definitely most definitely and uh, and it just it just completely breaks the uh, stereotypes of dealers, cause yeah, like like you mentioned, like she did do a joke, like I'm gonna suck your dick, and that's typically how we see people drug addicts. We see them over sexualized, out here sucking dicks for drugs, and they don't really do that with her. And I think they that's they do it in a successful way. They don't really go uh, fall into those those uh, tropes. So I, I kind of fuck with that. So I, I'm happy that they didn't go that route and and do that, cause that would have been the easy way out. Rather than yeah. actually exploring her story, so uh, let's move on to the next character, um, Nate. Nate, Nate, <laughs> Nate. All right, so Nate uh, went crazy last episode. Maddie, um, he was still mad at Maddie because uh, she was uh, with this dude at the party, and that drove him nuts and insane. You know, because he still cares about Maddie, even though he told his friend Chris that was like he, he was like, "Hey, man." You can't treat these hoes like housewives, man. You just fuck them and leave them. But apparently, that doesn't work with Maddie because he doesn't see her as like a whore. You know, she he doesn't see her as this super promiscuous woman. He sees her as an angel. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea. You know? Like she she was she was she was she was having strokes pumped in the pool, man. What are we talking about? Like I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, some some dude in the comment section said that didn't happen, and I'm like, oh, that, I think that happened, man. Uh, I don't know. They literally had a shot with the, where they go yeah. into the water and none of them have any, any. And the only reason he whooped his ass in the second episode is because they screwed and she was 17. Yeah, he didn't say that he didn't. Yeah, so yeah. So I think it's been confirmed that they did actually have sex. 
Um, but yeah, that that that's making him crazy. He's paranoid, and they do a great job of last episode explaining you know why he has this paranoia. Like it, 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 he's insecure about his manhood, and <laughs> he tries to yep. get as far away from anything that may be masculine at all, even to the point where no other dude can fuck his chick because uh. You know, a dick's been in there, and I don't want my dick to be in the same spot that another dick has been. Like, just goes right, <laughs> it goes super to the other side. So, what are your thoughts on Nate and uh, what may happen in the next episode? How you feel about that? I mean, I'll say this: Nate grew so much as a character in that last episode. I mean, he he pretty much wasn't even really a character in the first episode. He was he was generic jock dude that that, that plays the role every generic jock dude does. You know, his his friend McKay was way more interesting than he was. He was a well smoking uh, well well-spoken black man that um for the most part really did want a relationship with a woman that you know had a negative reputation at school being with a bunch of people and uh at the same time in the second episode he did kind of condemn her for, for for like um you know being sexual even though she thinks that's what he wants you know but um for the most part mckay seems to just be a uh a more it was a more interesting character in the first episode but as for nate Nate, Nate, I think this episode is going to give him an opportunity to, to I don't know, just to, yeah. just even more interesting stuff to pan out. Like, because uh, by by the end of the the second episode, we had this semi reveal, and I I told I told you this before we even started recording. That's the least crazy thing he's done so far. I just kind of want to yeah. see how this thing unfolds. <laughs> like on some Metal Gear Solid serial killer type shit, he just stalking a a guy, going into his apartment, uh. Beating the guy's yeah. ass and then putting on that dude's clothes in front of him. Yeah. Um, that's that's weird. <laughs> well, 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 all of that's at the beginning. Of, all of that's in the beginning <laughs> of the episode too. Like I yeah. know in the, the little review breakdown thing that you did, you mentioned that um, the person that he was describing as he as as uh, I mean as Zendaya was describing being things that um, Nate really likes are all characteristics of Jules, right? Yeah. But after that. There's an interaction where they say that Maddie was this pure person that he really loves and cares about and likes the idea that she isn't like the other girl. But at the same time, there's also that exchange of, what would you do if something like this happened to me? And it's like, oh, I'd kill him, I'd murder him, I would just oh, destroy yeah, him or something yeah. shit like that. Yeah. And it's like, he, he fulfilled that promise. He didn't kill anybody by, the, by that episode, but he definitely brought them pretty close to that. So he lived up to his promise. Yeah, I, I kind of took issue with that, um, them showing that. Cause I felt like it was it was kind of du- oversimplifying something, kind of dumbing it down, like telling us something and then have it happen this episode when they could they could have just easily just had it happen, and we would have believed it just through dialogue and uh, just knowing more about uh, Nate the character. Um, but I I, mean, I fuck with it. I mean, it was it was good narration. I did not like that dick montage. That shit, like I had. <laughs> I was like, I'm not a homophobe, but you're, that's way too many dicks for me, man. You're not, you're not supposed to like that. Not I, I know. I'll that. I know. It was I mean, on, it was also, on purpose. It was supposed to make you feel some type of way. Yeah, yeah. Right. Also, I was talking to my friend. Right. Like, I was watching the episode with a, with a friend. Like, not in person, but online, like through Rabbit or whatever. I was watching the episode, and he, I heard him say the first thing he said in that entire episode as we were watching, and he said, "I think that's the most penises I've ever seen in my life." At, at one point. I don't know. <laughs> And I was like, Yo. "Damn, I, I, I'd be worried. I'd be worried if I couldn't say the same thing." You know what I mean? <laughs> that's the most. That's the most dick I've seen with a, in, oh, at yeah. one point. Ever. Yeah. Like, that shit was crazy. But uh, this this episode, I think the next. I mean, the next episode, he's supposed to. Um, they're supposed to further explore him pretending to be shy guy one eighteen, and uh, trying to lure Jules over to where he's at. And I mean, he's seen his father get involved with transgender women and uh, you know, just outright gay dudes, and he's trying to do the same thing. And I mean that 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 experience uh, with his father or with his father's uh, sex collection kind of, um, I guess, exposed something about himself that he didn't know before, because he was into it. Right. He kept going back to the room constantly, and uh, it, at one point in the episode, he was caught by his father. And he just was staring at the camera on the desk. So, I yeah. mean, yeah. And that's probably why, that's probably how he knew, uh, that's probably how he knew what Jules was, like, which is a transgender woman. Because um, maybe he's yeah. seen that video of his father having sex with Jules. 
I don't think necessarily he saw the video, but I think a thing that did happen is is that he probably does not un- he does not know that his po- his father's been with Jaws, and I think what will end up happening is is that he might overcome the the mental hurdle of being with Jaws or wanting to be with Jaws, desiring Jaws. Yeah. But then that might lead to a conflict with his father because his father took away that purity that he desires so much. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay. I like that. I like that. That that may be the case. Yeah, maybe he doesn't know it at all. That, that's that's true. Yeah, because we don't know what don't what know what it. what uh when that scene took place where he was caught looking into the room. So we don't know. Um, but yeah, he's definitely interested in jewels. Um, yeah, jewels is everything he wants, man. And uh, who else is the, who else? Uh, the next person, uh, cat. Cat is the next person we should talk about. Now. This is her episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this may be her episode. Yeah, she was she had a lot of screen time in this uh, preview right here, and rightfully so. She is she is becoming a a, a good character to watch for, right? Because yeah, she is somebody that was never desired. She's like undesirable, right? Because she's she's a big girl and she didn't really get as much love and attention as her friends. She hangs around with all these hot girls that are super dressed up and skinny and show everything. And she's not that. So when she has her first sexual experience, uh, it makes her want more, I guess, to prove to everybody that she is desirable. And that's why when she saw those comments underneath the video, uh, her video. Just that. Okay. I think she just wants that sexual gratification, honestly. I think what it is is that he doesn't necessarily. So so it's really interesting, right? Yeah. When, when, when nobody actually saw the video, she was parading the fact that she lost her virginity. She was championing, look, I lost my virginity. I'm so awesome. I'm so cool. Yeah, yeah. But it's not awesome and cool when that shit is on video and everybody can see it for themselves. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. But now it's like she wants that gratification from people finding her desirable and saying that she's desirable without that actually leaking into her regular life. Yeah, because she did have on a mask uh, in this episode, I think. Wasn't that her with the mask on? Yeah, so, the cat yeah. mask. Yeah. So uh, she is becoming a cam girl. So uh, <laughs> do you do you all uh, believe that that's a huge leap for somebody that didn't uh, really have any sexual experience before? I guess. I, 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 think, I think she's always apparently kind of been a freak. You know what I mean? But, like, she's, uh, she's, she's kind of just uh, embodying her, her true character online. Like some people okay. find find like a sanctuary, like in an online space. Yeah, that's that's uh, it makes me ask the question: Is this this is this is this the origin story for all cam girls? <laughs> it uh, makes me ask that question. Mm, like, how, how does what, or, what becomes like, of a cam I, I would girl? Say, yeah, I mean, I don't know personally, but I can say that's def like it's never just one note. It's never just one origin point for everybody. Yeah, I'd say there's also, there's just as many people that have kind of always been attractive and use that just to make money on the side because they know they're attractive. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, one thing though, uh, it's like she read the comment section on Pornhub. <laughs> Yo. Fam, listen, if you put. It's like, if you if you got if you got like a a breadstick right and you stuck that into a into a jar of peanut butter they'd be like oh shit I wish I was that 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 breadstick that's what they would do yeah <laughs> so it kind of that's porn huh? <laughs> yo and but I mean it, it, you know, people people on porn sites are not afraid to be who they are you know because they already on the site and they came there for a specific reason <laughs> and, they, and, and they dick is their profile pic <laughs> and they dick is their profile pic. And I guess in a high school setting, people would like, you know what I mean? There's probably people in that high school that are attracted to her. She's not a bad looking chick. I mean, even, of you know, course, she met Ethan. Never, but she'll yeah. never find out. Yeah, she'll never find out. Yeah, yeah. And because there's this stigma with being with fat girls. Oh, and big no. girls. So. Yeah, that's her, that's her conflict, too, because there's a guy that might legitimately or potentially be interested in her. She's definitely interested in him. But then it's like that might ruin it for him. Yeah, she's looking for gratification online when she should be looking for that gratification in person and with people that she yes, can actually be with. Yes, yes. But that is the internet. That is what the internet is. It gives you that instant gratification, man. It's not always healthy, but it <laughs> it makes you feel good in that moment, and it's not something that you want to uh, continuously uh, seek out. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much it on Cat, man. We're gonna see if. Her and Ethan works out, and like you said, that will be a conflict in the future. He probably will discover that, uh, figure that shit out. Um, 
It's like, hey, that isn't that, isn't that you? Or, you know, maybe it'll be this thing where he has sex with her and he sees that chick's body, uh, and he'll notice like a, a birthmark or some shit <laughs> like that's on Nate. Kind of, kind of how we discovered that Nate was shy. Guy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah that, yeah, that yeah. may be a similar situation with that one. That nigga um, is not shy at all. He snuck in a man's house and waited for him <laughs> like Nick Fury, man. I know that shit was crazy. That Look, that nigga Nate Fury, man. <laughs> Nate Fury, man. <laughs> that's our nickname for him, Nate Fury, man. Who else? Sneaking uh, at the people's houses, just fam. You know, I thought he was actually kind of realer than Nick Fury. My guy was sitting on the couch. He whooped his ass, took a shower, wiped his dick with his <laughs> towel, and then went, "I'm gonna take your clothes and your umbrella." Like it's crazy. Yo, and and he and he and he was smart too. He was clever with. It. He removed all the the knives and weapons from the house <laughs> and put them all in the corner where he was at. So in order yeah, to get a weapon, he would have to go to where he too. was. Yeah, the bat, the baseball yeah. bat. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> straight up, just a just a sociopath, dude. Like, yeah, he's crazy. He's crazy, just like his father. Also, I didn't I didn't mention this in the review, but he hates his mother. He's he called her weak, and that's probably due yeah. to the infidelity of his father, and that she's not really doing anything about it. That's probably why he feels that way about his his mother. But like I said, he he's he's kind of like an incel with a girlfriend, man. Like he he his standards are super too high, and <laughs> and he and he hates. Women essentially, man, to the fact to the point where he hates his own mm-hmm. mother, man, and that he can only date this unicorn, this perfect girl who he, who he believes to be perfect, who's really who really isn't. Um, I don't they don't even show Chris this episode, um, so I don't, I mean, this preview, so I don't even know if he's going to come up at all. What are your thoughts on that character, uh, and his uh dilemma? I don't think I know Chris, it's Chris. You, the black guy, I think, yeah. Oh, you talking about McCann? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> is is his name McKay? His name might be McKay. You're right. Let me let me let me let me make the sure. The guy that hosted the party in the first episode. Yeah, it is McKay. I'm sorry. I'm thinking. I I kept thinking that um McKay would Nate, was Nate's last name, but it's not. It's like Jacobs or some shit. Yeah. You right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, I think McKay. I think McKay has a good relation. Is gonna have a good relationship with um. I can't even remember her name, but like he's gonna Cassie, have a good Cassie. relationship with Cassie because Cassie seems lovely. But for the most part, I feel like that that conflict is something that I don't know. They had to work for anyway. I think to a degree he is right. She is trying to make almost every interaction with him sexual. But at the same time, like she's probably led to to feeling like uh, that's the only way to get attention from men or to keep a person like a man interested at that at that age and stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, like uh, I also think he's a bit insecure because. He doesn't want her to validate that image all the guys told, like, kind of planted in his head before he even talked to her. I mean, it ain't even you know just I mean? the guy. Even her mother kind of planted that seed. Because yeah. uh, his his uh his scenes open up with him chilling at Cassie's house, waiting for her to come down. And he's talking to her mother. And she talks about how uh, she said something like she, she's, uh, you got you to gotta keep her attention. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah but so. at the same time, yeah, I think it's kind of an interesting, like, dilemma because, like, I do think there's, like, I think McKay's a good dude. I think Chris is definitely a good dude. But at the same time, I think the issue is, is that he's highly susceptible to influence. Even from the beginning, in the first episode, they show that he 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 thinks sex is porn. Like, he's susceptible to that influence and he yeah. tries to interact with this real woman in the way that he's seen in these porno videos. And that's a fabrication of life. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. And I, and uh, at the same time, you have, um, and I think this is even more interesting because of the second episode, we know that the version of the story that uh, Nate is telling McKay is entirely framed around this guy that doesn't, is, is straight up just a misogynist that hates women, mm-hmm. and also thinks anybody that's ever had sex on camera is going to be a horror. That's his mindset, because that's, yeah. that's that's him, that's what he dealt with, you know? Yeah, completely unrealistic. Um well, yeah, and like you said, he he is susceptible. I said, I oh, fucked that word all the way up. But yeah, I mean, he is easily <laughs> influenced <laughs> by uh, like I mean, he, like Nate, you know, yeah, like you like you mentioned, yeah, because early in the episode, I think he didn't want his brothers to be at the party, uh, but Nate kind of said it was okay, and he kind of went along with it. So he's he is sort of like a pushover, um, mm. yeah, easily influenced, sort of like a pushover. And you kind of see that uh, even with uh, football, 
like the college kid. He's yeah. a, a freshman. The coach, right? Yeah, the coach. He has this issue with the coach, and uh, I don't think he's going at the coach directly or even questioning the coach. Uh, he's just is venting in front of uh, Cassie, and that's of course that's the scene where she tries to, you know, fuck him on the couch, <laughs> and he's not having none of that. Yeah. What, what do you think? I kind of want to see more of that character, man. To Mama K, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see more of him. We'll get to him later. I think it's partly due to the fact that he's not in uh he's not in school, so he in college. So he's mm-hmm. not in there high school. Uh-huh. Yeah. So what what do you think of him asking for news at the end of the episode? Uh I think I think it's kind of rough, man. I, f- uh, I think it's him being disingenuous to who he is because like he's 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 at one point he's like, I don't want you to be super duper sexy because then you're gonna be that hoe that they told me you were when I met you. But at the same time, he's a dude that's fussy and wants moods. So it's you're giving her mixed messages. You don't want her to validate this image that everybody is putting in your head, but you still want the benefits of having a hoish yeah. girlfriend. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it's like, it's like, what, what are you doing? Nigga? <laughs> Just also, accept. Yeah. It's like, fuck it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, in the first episode, they also set up the idea of a nudes are like the currency. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the currency in, a, in high school and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'll put like uh, at every opportunity someone's taking pictures like that, they've come back to bite them in the butt in this series so yeah, far. So always, that, yeah. So, so those those are gonna end up somewhere, and it's not gonna end up good. So yeah, it's not at all. Um, um, who else? So we got Jules. Yeah, final character, Jules. Uh, so Jules is about to meet a uh, serial killer, uh, Nate. Um, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know what. Nate's attentions are yet, uh, but she's extremely Tyler, happy. Uh, what you said? Tyler and uh, wasn't the name Tyler? Like like uh, like her face? Yes, like, Tyler like is account. alias. Yeah, Tyler. I think Nate's yeah. alias is Tyler. Yeah, I think. I Wait, Nate's know. alias is Tyler? No, I think I think I thought uh, what was it called? Um, Jules's alias was Tyler, and um, oh, it, 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 was Shy I don't know. Uh, no, no, Shy Guy calls himself Tyler. Shy Guy says Tyler is his real name. So Shy oh, Guy is wow. an alias, uh, but Tyler used a fake name as his real name. Mm. And they scheduled okay, him to meet in sense. real life, yeah. Oh, it's about to be bad. Yeah, because Jules is transgender. Why would why would she call herself Tyler, man? It goes I don't know. I thought it was a double catfish. That's what I thought. <laughs> double catfish? What? Uh, <laughs> I see. Oh, uh, yeah. But, uh. So yeah, I mean that's pretty much. Jules didn't really do much last episode. She cradles uh, Rue at the end, and she's uh, sending getting dick pics from uh, Nate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and episode ends. I with, think I know. What, reveal. I think I know what the story is gonna end. By the way, because um, in the first episode, there's a, mo- where, a moment where where Rue talks about um, Jules before before what's it called? Um, they even meet. You know what I mean? And she says um, the story about. How Jules uh, remembers being the age she is right now, and uh, crying and begging God that someday she 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 she'd already be twenty five and she'd have a roommate who's a girl and they'd be best friends forever or something like that. Yeah. And I think the show is gonna end with them, and, I, and then like there was the whole thing about uh, Rue saying she cried after she heard Jules say that, and I think that's gonna matter. The reason she cries is because that's exactly how Jules and uh. Rue's life is going to end up. I think Rue's going to be clean. I think Jules and her are going to be really, really good friends forever. And what's going to happen is, is that the reason Zendaya is even narrating this entire story is, is because this is a story they're looking back on. And yeah. They already, you know what I mean? I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is a, a great point. Yeah, it is. It definitely seems like she is looking back on it. It's a reflection. So uh, one big flashback. Uh also, I, th- I thought you were going to say that it might end in murder. So, uh, yeah, um, that's going to be. I, 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 this series has already shocked me enough. I think that sh- like a little bit of death isn't going to surprise me. Because I mean, transgender women do get killed a lot, uh, and I think it's especially around uh, the fact that uh, the guy that's going out with the transgender woman gets found out by his friends. And uh, in order to uh, overcompensate for some points that some credibility that he may have lost, he lashes out and, and kills the transgender women. This shit happens all the time. If I forgot that, what it's called. If that happens, that's gonna be real fucking sad, dude. But I, I hopefully yeah. we get the happily ever after. But I think we will promise. 
Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's just a thought, just a thought, because I they've already shown that he is not we <laughs> he's crazy, he's super crazy, uh, and he's dealing with uh, some sexuality issues. Like he don't he don't he doesn't really understand himself yet. So uh, yeah, yeah, sexuality <laughs> issues. He's definitely like insecure about his own masculinity, and he subjects other people to criticism because he's insecure about himself. He lashes out on people that he's attracted to because he already shot on Jules for being trans despite being attracted to trans women. So Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, uh, I don't know when, like like we mentioned, his father might come into play. So uh, I don't know when that's going to happen. But, uh, yo, it's it's uh, it's, getting, it's getting hot. It's getting hot. Uh, any, any, any other things you want to say before we get out of here? Anything people we may have missed? Uh, no, I'm pretty happy with what we've said so far. I think next episode is going to be another good one. And, um... I hope this is a mini series and not necessarily something that needs to be continued because I feel like they could tell a really tight, self-contained, interesting story. It looks like um the the first season is going to be eight episodes. You know? yeah, that's good. I like that. Nice and tight, man. I know twenty four or twelve. Like just just keep it compact with the eight episodes. Um, I mean, but we'll we'll know where they go what the the direction they're going in with this show when we see. Like they announced the next season and that shit is like twelve episodes, so I think that'll tell us all we need to know. Uh, Cause you know the Grassy had a lot of seasons, man. This is a uh, I think this Drake is a producer on this show, so uh, uh, he's he trying to relive that experience he had as a youth. So this is what it is. Uh, I am Bushido Spirit. He is Mo. Uh, we we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out. How did it go?